I had a little interview with a few people in between here, but apart from that, other people have been doing stuff. So again, thanks for uh, those who have been doing it. And it also, proves us that we have such a uh, healthy, <laughs> encouraging environment here that we can do that sort of thing. Uh, other people can uh, catch them up and, and speak and brief. It's really cool. Um, so State Youth Games is done and dusted for another year. And it's fair to say, what an awesome adventure it was. Now, for those who went for a day or the whole time, um, you see there's a lot more mud uh, in place than, than before. Uh, has, anyone, has everyone recovered? Who picked up illnesses? Who was sick during this week? <laughs> Ooh. Uh, I think the audio is sick. Uh, so I was, uh, I'm still recovering. I, I've told a few people today that even uh, today I sat down for a half an hour nap and it turned into a two-hour sleep. Um, it was a great dream about state games as well. Uh, but uh, like all this week, I've sort of been catching up sleep, and I think because I'm that little bit older now, that I am uh, trying to take a bit more out of me each year. But it was an awesome time. It was a great time of um, all different things going on, and, and the sport and the community that we had was awesome. And we're going to touch on that a little bit next week as well. Uh, dedicate some time to that. But for me, the time leading up to SYG is a fun time. The problem is what to pack. Does anyone else have any issues with trying to work out what to pack for say games? Mm -hmm. Some people forget things. Some people forget things. Uh, anything. <laughs> keeping warm this year, I think, because of the conditions, uh, I heard on the Sunday that uh, Target ran out of a couple of sizes of track suits and I had to order some more in because people were buying stuff. <laughs> uh, but for me, I, I always have trouble trying to pack the state games. Now, one thing I know is going to be in the nights are going to be cold. It's the only time in the year where I ever sleep with a beanie on. Um, the the uh, socks and everything else can go off because it's in the sleeping bag, but the head remains cold for the rest of the night. Uh, but it's really cool. Are we okay, Jake? Yes, yeah, I'm still. My microphone. Hey. It is my fault. So what happens after seven weeks off? You didn't tell me I didn't fight That's okay. Well, we're out with you. I didn't, you didn't miss much on the audio. Anyway. <laughs> That's better off anyway. Anyway, safe games, I said for me, um, packing at safe games is always hard. You don't know when it's going to be hot or cold or whatever. So, ooh, now it's hard. Uh, so, you don't know when it's going to be cold or not. Uh, and listen, it's the only time of year where I sleep with a beanie on. Uh, Linda, sometimes my wife, if it's really cold, I'll sleep with a beanie on and I'll get her silly. But then I realised, stay at games. <laughs> it's not that silly to sleep with a beanie on, because uh, you do get really cold. But the rest of the time is a mystery. Like, because you don't, like, even in the stadium games... We had a bit of everything. Like, Saturday was pelting down with rain sideways, uh, and then Monday was beautiful sunshine. And so you just don't know what you're going to pack. So sometimes you can pack shorts and a T-shirt and for, for the summer rain. Sometimes you go to the, the double trackies, which means thermals, tracksuits, and a baggy pair of tracksuits on the top of that, and it's still cold um, because you still get cold. Uh, and then it's, when it's rain, you just don't know what to do. And we had that this time. We had lots of people go out and buy stuff because they hadn't prepared enough. Now, for me, when I go anywhere, I overpack. I take things, uh, and I know some people are the same, I take things because I don't need. Like, for example, at State Youth Games, I often wear the, the same tracksuit and same jumper for three days straight without showering. Um, it's okay. Uh, but uh, we do that. And then I, I pack like two or three jumpers, I pack two or three tracksuits, two or three shorts, everything else, but I only wear one thing. And so I come home, and Linda, I, the first thing I do when I get in the door, and, and Linda says, let's, let's do some washing. I said, no, no, I want to go to sleep. <laughs> let's go do some washing, because that's why her brain works. And so we have to unpack everything and I have to sort through, usually have I worn this and have I don't worn this. And the stuff that I don't wear piles up to here and the stuff that I do wear is only half a load of washing. And so Linda gets a bit bemused and says, why do you pack this sort of stuff in the first place? Well, you just never know when you might need it. Um, but I, like I, even this year I packed stuff that I didn't need. I, I packed two or three beanings, which I only ever use one. And then I knew I was going to wear this jacket for a long time, but I caught another jacket. So we pack things that we don't need. And it is like that. School camps are the worst. Being, a, being a, a, um, a chaplain at schools happens all the time at schools. Now, last year I went to 
uh, ski camp. Now, tell me if I'm wrong, we had about half guys and half girls, but each girl bought a hair straightener and a blow dryer. Now, can you share these items? You can. See, I wasn't too sure. I wasn't too sure, like, uh, some people need their own or not, but they all bought it, and I thought, well, you probably don't need it, because you have to wear, we have to wear helmets and everything like that anyway, uh, so it's only at night, and the only time at night is when you're seeing each other, so that's when you blow dry and straighten your hair, and then you have to put the helmet on in the morning, and helmet hair, I don't know how it works, but that's what they do. And then, but listen, the only thing, last year, uh, I was talking to some other teachers regarding this, and year nines for the outdoor ed have to go on a um, wilderness camp. So it's three days where they pack everything on their back and that's all they take. So they, they, they carry their tents and they tents out, walk another couple of k's or 20 k's or whatever it is and then camp out again and go from that. They had requests of people wanting to bring their hair straighteners, their iPods, their laptops and blow dryers. Now the stupid thing is there's no electricity in the wilderness. So where do they plug it in? But they still wanted to bring it because it was like that comfort thing. They still want to hold on to it because they thought, oh, we might need it. We might straighten our hair while a bear's chasing us. Um, not really a bear. There's not bears in Australia. Uh, <laughs> can be a, a drop bear, a koala bear if you're in somewhere else. But, um, but we all, always, whenever we go on camp, whenever we go anywhere, we often overpack and we pack things that we don't need. And I think this is a great metaphor for some areas of our lives. But sometimes in our lives, we carry around with us, in our headspace and in our heart, some things that we don't need. And that drag us down and weigh us down. Now, for the next two weeks, we're going to be focusing on some of these things. And in particular, something like guilt and regret. Like the things, oh, I should have done this, or I should have done that. Oh, I wish I could change this. Or tonight, we're going to be looking at how, oh, look, I just hate what I do this all the time. I, I can't believe I've done it again. Why did I do this? Why do I do that? And this sort of stuff that gets in our head all the time. See, sometimes it is over something we did and we just focus on it. We replay the situation in our head over and over again. For some reason, it just keeps on going over. See, some people can move on and it's okay. But for some times in our lives, these memories keep on coming back into our hearts and keep on coming back into our heads. And they replay over them. And just when we think we've gotten over it, it comes back to haunt us again. They go, oh, why did I do this? Like, I know that this person's forgiven me, but I just hate the way I've done it. Why, why, why? See, guilt is a serious roadblock to an abundant life with Jesus. So there's a preacher called Garrison Keller. He says, guilt is a gift that keeps on giving. Because just as I said, when we think we've forgotten about it, it'll come back. It'll replay in our mind, it'll come back. For some, it leads to serious issues. Like for some, it can lead to depression and, and other sort of stuff. Because that stuff keeps on playing in their mind and replays and replays and replays. And it cuts us off from being with God because of our own heart. We feel like we need to, there's something wrong with us because we can't connect with God. So right off the bat, I want to highlight a verse. Now everyone knows John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. But who knows John 3.17? Yeah? <laughs> For God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. So right off the bat, what we're starting about this, highlight that. God did not send his world to condemn it. He came to save it. But so often, we condemn ourselves. We tell ourselves off. And now we've got to work through it. So even biblical heroes battled with it. King David did this. <laughs> now we know, I took Matt's examples of, of how he did this, but so often the examples of King David we hear about is, is his heart playing days with the sheep in the future, in the, in the past, that's something, and then he 
slayed Goliath, and then he came this wonderful king from Burger King in America. Um, <laughs> no, but what I love about David in the Bible is that just as many good things there is, he's done lots of bad stuff as well. From the time when he was spying on a, a woman having a bath, and he went out and got her husband killed in the front line of battle so he could have her, and I didn't want to show the graphic of that because that would have been a bit weird to have it on there. But things like that, David did as well. So we always hear how good King David was, but if you read through Samuel and Chronicles and Kings, you hear about all this bad stuff as well and how he's moving back and forth with God and having this battle and wrestle with God on why he's doing this sort of thing. And so when you read the book of Psalms, David is attributed to writing most of them. And so I want to look at Psalm 38 because it picks up what we feel like when we go through things and when we have a a guilty moment in ourselves. So Psalm 38. O Lord, do not rebuke me in your anger or discipline me in your wrath. Your arrows have pierced me and your hand has come down upon me because of your wrath. There is no health in my body. My bones have no soundness because of my sin. My guilt has overwhelmed me like a burden too heavy to bear. My wounds fester and are loathsome because of your sinful folly. I am bowed down and brought very low. All day long I go about mourning. My back is filled with searing pain. There is no health in my body. I am feeble and utterly crushed. I groan in anguish of my heart. All my longings lie open before you, Lord. And my sighing is not hidden from you. My heart pounds. My strength fails me. Even the light has gone from my eyes. My friends and companions avoid me because of my wounds. My neighbours stay away. Sometimes in our lives... This is what guilt makes us feel like. It drags us down. We don't feel worthy enough to be with someone. We we have that roadblock before us, before other people and before God. We think, why would that person want to spend time with me? Because I do this all the time. What happens when this happens? What happens when I do this? Why do I feel like this? See, David picks it up. It doesn't just affect our heart. It can affect all of us. And it can affect people's relationships around us as well. And so when we think about guilt and we think about regret in our our thoughts and our minds, sometimes it can play too much of a burden in our heart. So what can we do about it? So there are even times when we are not when we worry about things and have guilty feelings about things that aren't even there. Because one thought snowballs onto another thought and it goes onto another thought and we keep on taking ourselves down. So again, what can we do about it? You know, and often times like this, I turn to Disney for it and I, and I did have a video. At the moment, my, my, my kid's favourite movie at the, at the moment is The Lion King and you know, they, they go around singing Akuna Matata <laughs> and I did have a video of, of Tom and uh, Beth doing it, but they weren't in tune. No, <laughs> it wasn't that bad, but I just couldn't, I couldn't put it on to whatever it was. So they we're going to have it. But I, I, I do like that song, Akuna Matata. Uh, it says, no worries for the rest of my days. And it is supposed to be like that. It's, if, if only it was that easy. We, we have this thought, yeah, no, just forget about it. Don't worry about it. I've been done with something like that. So the philosophy of that is okay, but it sticks in our head. We need to get rid of it. Too many times in our lives, yeah, we say, yeah, it's okay. I've moved on from it. The past is in the past. And the figure hits us in the head. We learn from that. But too often down the track, it comes back to us. And we learn it again. And it comes back to haunt us. It's like that cut on the side of your mouth, on the top of your mouth, where you know it's healing, but every now and again you put your tongue against it to see if it's still there, and it hurts again. <laughs> and then five minutes later you think, oh, is it still there? And you do it again. <laughs> and then you go, oh, how is it healing? And then a day later you do it again. It's like that. If we only just leave, leave it be, it'll heal by itself. But we want to touch it and get back to it and see what it's like. 
we hold on to this excess baggage in the back of our mind, and we always check, oh, is it still there? Is it still annoying us? So there's a story that I've told before, but I'll tell it again. A little boy was visiting his grandparents, and he was giving his slingshot. He was practicing in the woods, but he could never hit a target. As he came back to Grandma's yard, he spied a pet duck sitting on a log. And he took aim and flew, and it hit the pet duck and killed the pet duck. The boy panicked. Desperately, he wanted to hide the duck, only to look up and see his sister, Sally, had seen it but had said nothing. After lunch, Grandma said, Sally, let's wash the dishes. But Sally said, Johnny told me that he wanted to keep help out in the kitchen, didn't you, Johnny? And he whispered to, to Johnny, he said, remember the duck. So Johnny said, yes, yes, I'll do the dishes. Later, Grandpa asked if the children wanted to go fishing. Grandma said, I'm sorry, but I need to take Sally to help make supper. Sally smiled and said, that's taken care of. Johnny wants to do it. Again, she whispered, remember the duck. After several days of Johnny doing his chores, of Sally's chores, finally he couldn't stand it anymore. He confessed to Grandma that he killed the duck. I know, said, I know Johnny, said Grandma, giving him a hug. I was standing at the window the whole time because I love you. I forgave you, but I wondered how long you would let Sally make a slave of you for. So how often do we let guilt feelings make a slave of us? How often do we do that? How often do we know that God has forgiven us for what we do, but we let that have a slave over our lives? We store it up and we keep that excess baggage hidden. And whenever we feel down, whenever we feel upset, we often go to it. But how do we deal with it? How do we get rid of it? As I said, tonight we're looking at those feelings of regret and saying, I shouldn't have done that, I shouldn't have done this. Next week we'll be looking at the how can I change back time or, or getting second chances. But tonight, how do we get rid of it? How do we start the process of trying to get rid of this excess baggage that we carry around in our head? The start of the process is at the end of Psalm 38. It says, O oh Lord, do not forsake me, but be not far from me, O oh my God. Come quickly to help me, O oh Lord, my Saviour. The first thing is, give it up to God. It seems so simple. It seems easy enough to do it, but so often we just want to do it ourselves. We want to deal with ourselves. It is all about getting on our knees, crying at the end of our bed, stopping in the middle of our anger, and just saying, God, it's too big for me. Take it on my hands. I'm sorry for what I've done. I know you're going to forgive me, and I know your forgiveness is waiting for me. I'll give it to you. See, when we ask for forgiveness, God knows we are legitimately sorry about what we do. He knows our hearts. He knows what we mean and what we don't mean. So we need to give it up to God and say, hey, God, I'm truly sorry for this. I'm sorry I stuffed up again. And God's saying, hey, hey, it's okay. It's all right. I love you no matter what. Let's, let's forget about that. Let's move on. Let's do that. See, the next thing seems to be the hardest, though. See, for those of us who have grown up in a church, we know that God forgives our sins, but for some reason, we hang on to it. We are the ones that hang on to it. Not God. We are the ones that hang on to it. We keep it in the back of our mind. And we beat ourselves up over it all the time. See, we have to trust Jesus when he says he forgives us. There are so many verses that says we are forgiven, forgiven full stop. See, 1 John 1 verse 9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all right unrighteousness. It doesn't say you are partly forgiven. It doesn't say, I'll forgive you now, but in two weeks later, we'll bring it back up again. It says you're forgiven. And that's it. In Romans 8.1, Therefore, there is therefore no, now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. 
Again, it doesn't say, oh, there's no condemnation now, but wait a couple of weeks' time, I'll bring it up again and condemn you then. It says, full stop again, there's no condemnation in Jesus. You are forgiven from that. These are just a couple of verses where the Bible talks about forgiveness, but we still hold on to it. We need to learn that what is finished is finished and we are forgiven. And if God has forgiven you, then why do we not forgive ourselves? Why do we hang on to it? So does God want us to feel guilty? No, he doesn't. He wants us to move on from it. Even the Old Testament, it says, Isaiah 43, 25, 25 says, it says, I, even I, am who, who blots out your transgressions for my own sake and remembers your sins no more. This is compelling enough evidence to say Jesus and God forgives all your sins and doesn't hold on to them. I want to end with a simple illustration. So often we, we, we think of our sins like this. We, we, we have a sin, we do something wrong and it's sin and that sort of thing. And so we say our sins are forgiven and we, we rub it out. Now, I'm not going to do a very good job of rubbing it out because it's going to take me a long time to rub it out. But you know when you use a rubber and you rub something out that, yes, you can ride over the top of it again, but you still see it. And you can still do that. That's not how God operates. God operates like this. He sees your sin. He gets it there. <laughs> he gets your sin. <laughs> and there. That's what he does with your sin. It's no longer there. Oh. <laughs> it's no longer there. But it's burnt. It's taken away. So we don't have to remind about it anymore. There's no way we can see what it was before there. That's what God's like as well. God doesn't remember our sins, but we do. So remember when God, when you think about God's forgiveness and the guilt that you have about things, it is not about getting an eraser and rubbing it out. It's not about the thoughts in our mind that keeps on bringing back. God's forgiveness is like burning it all up. Let us think about that and let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we know that we are not perfect. We sin every single day. We do things to other people. We do things to you. And we may feel guilty because of that. And there are so many times that when we do ask for forgiveness, you forgive us, but we still keep it in the back of our mind. Lord, help us to deal with this guilt that we have. Help us to truly understand your forgiveness. That is not rubbing something out so we can run over it but still see what's underneath. It is getting rid of it completely. And so some of this excess baggage that we have carrying around with us that is still in the back of our mind, take it from our mind. Take it from our hearts. Lord, we thank you that on that cross that you died for our sins. And that we can give them up to you to do that. Lord, we just pray these things in your mighty and wonderful name. Amen.